Hello, and welcome to week three of Embracing the Journey. <laughs> Parents, you can't tell me that you don't sometimes play with your kids' toys, especially during nap time. Just saying, my name is Todd, and like the heart of Embracing the Journey is just to invite you into our home, out here on our back deck. As you all remember that Jesus wants to meet us here. We may not be able to gather in this season, but Jesus is the God of the everyday, and he wants to give us meaning in the mundane. So we hope that this encourages you. And today I'm gonna to have a conversation with a good friend of mine, Judson Kirkpatrick. We were Bradley Bears together. We went to Lee University together. And every time I talk to Judd, he makes me better as he has so much wisdom to share. So I hope that you enjoy our conversation and I hope that our conversation makes you better because I know talking to him did that for me. And so we're gonna hop on over to Zoom and I hope to see you there. Hey, Judson, how's your Tuesday morning going? Uh, this is the first time I've actually seen morning in a while. Normally, <laughs> uh, afternoons are, are when I'm seeing the day begin. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I think a lot of people watching can relate to you there. Um, hey, not everybody knows you, so could you just introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Judson Kirkpatrick, uh, husband to Jenny, uh, father to Christiana, Gideon and Evangeline, and uh, I'm pastor at Valley View Baptist Church, and also a language arts teacher at Lake Forest Middle School. I guess those Come are the on, <laughs> that's awesome! And uh, can you let everybody know what are the ages of your kids? Christiana is nine, Gideon's four, and Evangeline will be two in August. Woo! Yes. So, uh, yeah, we're with you on the twos. Liam is uh, two. Um, Oliver's eight. He's actually nine months today i should keep oh. up with stuff so mm -hmm. um but yeah the two is a fun age but it's also a challenging age right yeah any advice just off the cuff since i don't have a nine-year-old and a um, four-year-old not off the cuff <laughs> <laughs> i love it they're, that'll they're, be part two yeah different advice for boys and girls different advice for each one so <laughs> I'd have, to, I'd have to enter a counseling session and you'd have to give me a lot more details. <laughs> Money or details? We'll have to pay you for that? Oh, I'm not good enough. All. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, well, um, we're calling today Cheap Breakfast Deep Thoughts. So um, why are we calling it that? You want to let people know? Yeah. Uh, when Todd and I were in college at Lee, um, we would meet up regularly for what we ended up calling uh, – cheap lunch, deep thoughts. And uh, so we would get as many coupons or find as many deals as we possibly could uh, and then try to have some really great conversations. So it was wonderful. I mean, the highlight of our college experience was Reimer cheesecake. But then when it comes to Kristen Arp is somewhere going, praise the Lord. Um, but then when it comes to cheap lunch, deep thoughts, Moe's and Brewster's, if any Clevelanders remember that, we got the works, big ice cream, big nachos, all that stuff. It was like four dollars total between the two of us, right? It was it was momentous. It was awesome. Oh, it was awesome. So, what's your um, cheap breakfast this morning, Judd? Uh, honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> I love it. So I haven't eaten mine yet, but mine's going to be some oats and um, crunchy peanut butter. Um, to be honest, I'm a Peter Pan guy, but I have converted to just because they have the natural I like the natural and I can't find the natural peanut butter crunchy or Peter Pan crunchy so and we buy the bulk of these because it's cheaper than the individual packets come on somebody you know so um and then of course I'm drinking some coffee you know but I mean that we got to do that uh, so we'll dive right in so our first question um you mentioned the variety of roles you play most importantly husband father but then also you're an incredible pastor a great teacher so and how has your world changed? Well, actually, we, a lot of us probably know how your world's changed. So let me rephrase that. Um, what are some struggles and benefits to all the changes you've gone through in this COVID-19 season? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I think um, the, the struggles have just been in lacking the usual structures uh, means that if I'm going to, have any I have to impose it and that doesn't come naturally for me um, and so 
I've not been all that successful until more recently, I guess, in, yeah. in creating the order and rhythms uh, that I need for, for a day. And so the, the struggles that come with that have been, um, I, I guess, just not having kind of clear boundaries in place since yeah. I'm working at home. Uh, it can kind of intrude into, into every part of the whole day. Um, and, uh, and because so much of the work is communication through technology, yeah. it's, uh, it just doesn't have the flow to it um, like it does um, when you're just in the particular place where you're supposed to do your work. Uh, so some of those, um, j just the, those in-between times of, all right, I've sent a text message, now I just need to wait on the reply. I've sent the email, waiting on the reply, setting up the Zoom meeting, now waiting for the Zoom meeting to start. And uh, a lot of time can feel kind of wasted in between. Um, yeah. And so you can get to the end of a day and have done some things, but yet not feel very productive and still feel tired. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. And so that, that's been some of the struggles benefits for sure. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy about the opportunity to have, to have worked from home. Uh, Jenny and I still like each other. I'm happy to report. Yes. <laughs> or I, I, I'm speaking for myself. I assume she would agree. Uh, I'm just going to proceed on that assumption, but, uh, but no, I, I I'm, definitely enjoying uh, getting to spend more time with my kids, especially since they're, since they're young and, um, yeah. and to be, be present for more of the moments of each day for them and for Jenny. So. Yeah, that's good. Man, I, I think Judson, I think that struggle, I've definitely felt that at times of just creating new structure in a totally different environment is really difficult. Um, and one thing I did and felt miserably at is I actually try to take like my office rhythms and just translate them to home at the beginning. And I'm like, no, it's a new environment. So like there was a lot of reimagining, um, recreating stuff. And so I, I don't know if you said you kind of gotten your feet under you recently. I think I feel like I'll get my feet under me and then something shifts and I've got to like recalibrate. I think there's a lot of that in this season. I don't know if you feel that, um, yeah. but that's been a challenge. Uh, and do your kids still like you? That's probably a question too. <laughs> um, I did ask one of them. I won't say which uh, to protect the guilty, uh, but I did ask one of them the other day if they were glad I was at home or wanted me to go back to school. And, and this particular child said, go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tried to find the reasons for that and uh, it, it was hard to get them to give me much detail, but I'm going to not take that to heart. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is amazing. We're going to chalk it up to a child's mood. I need, yes. I need to so. Exactly. Maybe you didn't share your Honey Nut Cheerios that morning or something. It could have you know? been. Yes. <laughs> uh, have you um, become a homeschool parent or is, is, have you become a homeschool teacher? Has Jenny taken on more of that role, especially with Christine? Um, so we, we were actually uh, homeschooling Christiana before anyway. Oh, and so, uh, and when I say we, I mean Jenny. Uh, and so, uh, so Jenny's has just kind of continued on with the track they were already on. So in, in that way, it's been less disruptive for us than for many people. So I'm okay, grateful for good, that. good. So basically you've just invaded the good thing that Jenny and Christiana already had going on. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, I understand. As usual. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> oh, but, um, you know, I also love what you said. I do think like you said, these benefits, the benefit of having this extra time with family, that's something I was in our community group last night. I, I don't want to lose sight of that in the season because we wouldn't have this kind of time normally. So I'm glad you said that. I hope that's a reminder to everybody watching. Like, let's lean into that even on the really hard days, you know? Yeah. Um, and then just our second thing, I, I'd love for you to answer a question of your own choosing. This is pretty awesome. When you get to do that, so you get to make up the question and the answer. I mean, this is phenomenal. So go to town, Judd. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my, my brain generates lots of questions, but I think one uh, worth asking right now, um, since we're trying to say something helpful for our, our churches listening in, um, it's just the question of how we – uh, as followers of Christ, how do we relate to each other, uh, even as we disagree about the best ways to respond um, to this COVID-19 moment? Uh, and that, that question just had some layers added to it uh, by the fact that the our state is reopening some things, and so uh, that's leaving people with a lot of personal decisions to make about how 
how much freedom they're going to take advantage of. Uh, yeah. And people have their opinions about what our churches should do, of course, in this, mm-hmm. in with this moment. Um, and so how should we as followers of Christ relate to each other, even when we don't agree on the best course of action right Ooh, now? Great question. Um, and so, so now if you'll just go ahead and answer that for us, Todd. Yeah, I think I hear Liam. He needs me. Um, oh. I'll be back. You just continue on. Okay, great. Oh, we'll wait. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind awkward silences in my classroom on the internet. That's right. You're a middle school teacher. You used to do. That's right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now, I, I think uh, the right place to start is probably just by asking the Lord to give us humility. Yeah. Um, partly it's humility before a situation that's, that's complex. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, that, that there's, that there's nothing in, in scripture, uh, to tell us the specifics of how a church should handle this moment, um, or how an individual follower of Christ should handle this moment. And so, uh, because we don't have clarity from scripture on some of the decisions we want to make, I think we just want to be humble and say at the end of whatever convictions we arrive at, we just want to say, and I could be wrong. That's good. Um, and, and I think that's a charitable place to begin in, in relating to others, um, about this kind of moment and then deciding how we respond to those we disagree with to just know we could be wrong. Um, and, uh, our, our soundbite, uh, culture and our highly partisan culture doesn't encourage us, us to ever admit that we might be wrong. Um, but but Christ gives us an example of and calls us to humility. And I think that's one of the things it means when we're uh, facing something that's bigger than our comprehension, really. Um, That's good. And uh, so I I think that humility there is, is key. And then I think just having a, a charitable spirit um, Mm -hmm. toward each other to, and part of that's just being non-judgmental, me not assuming that I know your motives Mm -hmm. uh, for holding the view that you do or, um, or, or doing what you do during this season, but just to assume the best about, uh, about each other um, and to interact accordingly. Uh, and, and I think that one place that's partic- even harder to do than when we're in person is on social media. And so much of yeah. uh, this moment has driven us to social media for communication. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just think we need to be aware of the fact that there are heightened dangers there in that forum yeah. um, to, to speak in ways that are rash um, in ways that, that we would know if we were in person would alienate someone, but we, we may be insensitive to that in that arena, but the alienation may happen nonetheless. That's good. Um, and so I think to, to have a spirit of humility and charity toward each other um, as we reach different conclusions and do different things is a good place to start. Yeah. I, I love that. And um along those lines of scripture that's been on my heart as just, we pray for unity in our family at night as we pray over our boys and just um, love Romans twelve eighteen And so far as it depends upon you um, live peaceably with each other. I think lately the Holy Spirit's been driving me a verse before to Romans twelve seventeen. 17, um, give sight to do what is, uh, give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Mm-hmm. And so I think that really applies in this season too. And something that um, I know William Vest and I have talked about, we, came up with this wording together but then we've also talked about as a church is just we choose curiosity over critique Mm. and that's not my natural response when I may like this goes back to humility thing when I may like the idea that we have in place and then I don't like somebody else's it's natural for me to critique like you're saying if we'll pray for that spirit of humility then we can actually start with curiosity and asking questions so and that that's super relevant to this time and as always, you're full of wisdom, Judd. So great job forming a question and answering your own question. Um, <laughs> I love it. It helps make your answer much more successful when you're the one who gets to ask yourself what you <laughs> Maybe you could try that when school resumes in the fall with your yeah. middle school students. It's good format. Create your own test and answer it. It's Socratic method just with me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it. Um, well, the last thing just to touch on, um, we were in a conversation at CrossNet. Man, they've been awesome. Just to have the support from them, um, and it's just a local network of churches and the leadership of Phil Taylor and Randy Bonner 
has been awesome during this time. And, and I want to make sure I get this statement right, because you said a temptation in this season is to boil ministry down to what's quantifiable and viewable. And I was on Zoom in that meeting, and I'm opening a new window, and I'm typing that out. And that I have referenced that so many times. I've thought about that so many times. Could you just speak to that? Because um, then specifically what you said, is it tempting to neglect the phone call to the widow because nobody sees it and to get focused on all the views and comments and, you know, in the digital world that we have to navigate, man, that was so challenging to me. Could you just speak a little bit to that? Yeah. Um, I think I feel that keenly um, because I'm addicted to approval. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah. and, you know, by default, instinctually, I often am in pursuit of, of approval from others. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, in this season where I can't, you know, be in a room preaching to my people, seeing their heads nod or being told at the back door, you know, good message or whatever. Uh, online, what you're looking for, of course, is, is views, is shares, is um, being tagged into things because people are praising what you're doing. And, you, you know, you're, you're looking for these kinds of cues and it's, um, it, it's easy if that mindset or that, that craving for approval, if it goes unchallenged, um, to just begin doing ministry for that. Yeah. Um, and at, at that point, uh, you know, it's, it's less about Christ's kingdom than it is about my own. Mm. Uh, and, and partly it just starts, I think, with facing up to that fact, um, that, that if I'm ministering out of a desire for approval, out of a desire for the praise of others, um, then I'm actually doing ministry in the name of an idol. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it starts with just that kind of sober place of facing that for what it really is. Um, and, and like I say, it's a, it's a tendency that was there already. This hasn't created some new temptation in my heart. It's just drawn it to the surface and uh, shown new ways that it's manifesting itself. Um, yeah. And one of the just simple statements Jesus makes that that I've been thinking about that's so relevant for this season uh, is beware of practicing your righteousness before men. That's good. Um, and of course, he's in, in context, he's talking about those who prayed long, impressive prayers uh, for the acclaim of others. Um, so, so the idea that we could be involved in very spiritually impressive activities um, and doing it all, you know, with the public front of it being for God's glory when really we're seeking glory for ourselves. Um, and so there's just a ministry online, I think just amplifies, um, that particular temptation. Uh, and so to, to reorient about whose glory this is about, um, to who, whose glory the ministry is about, um, and to, to remember the things Jesus taught, like when he commends the widow who gives the small offering, mm -hmm. um, to remember that he talks about giving a cup of cold water in his name, um, that he talks about, you know, in, in that James talks about visiting the orphan and widow in distress is what true religion is like. Uh, and, and none of those are the kinds of things um, that when done genuinely are going to be highly visible yes. uh, and, and they won't matter to many people at a time. Mm. Uh, and so, so to operate with the definition that success is being faithful um, rather than to operate as if success means uh, always means something very quantifiable or very visible to many. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just, it, it's easy to, uh, because we have a sincere desire to reach and help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that desire gets mixed in with this temptation to, to crave approval that I'm talking about. Um, we can just end up very easily deceiving ourselves, I think, and, yeah. and, and baptizing our approval craving and calling it being concerned about a big impact. You're right. Um, and so we just need the spirit to, to search us, know us, uh, see if there is any 
offensive way in us. Um, and then to, again, lead us back to humility uh, before God. Um, and to remember that ultimately the most meaningful thing we can do is something for God's glory. Yeah. Um, and not earning that for ourselves. So that's, that was some of what, what was on my mind then and what I've continued to um, need to be oriented towards since. Man, I, I really appreciate that. I'm personally biased and think everyone needs to hear that. Um, who's doing, who's in any kind of leadership role in this season, because you're right. And something you said was so key. This isn't a new temptation. It's only magnified. Yeah. Like I distinctly remember walking off um, stage, you know, months ago when we were um, all meeting and, and having thoughts like, man, I think so-and-so would like this talk today. And the Holy Spirit was like, what are you doing? Like, I'm the one who matters. Like, do I like it? Am I pleased? Galatians 1.10. And it was just like getting beat up, but it was so necessary. And so yeah. I think that has put some kind of flashing lights on anytime I'm thinking, man, I hope so-and-so likes this, or I know somebody's not going to like this. It's like, Jesus, are you pleased? Like, Holy Spirit, did I follow how you led it, how you led me? Um, but again, that's so magnified. And I love what you said. That the answer is not to just, okay, zoom the widows now and make sure that that's on social media or post about all the invisible things we did. Be like, look at what I did. Praise Jesus. You know, like that, that's not the answer. Um, because you're right. Like coming back to those things that Jesus said um, about maybe praying long prayers in that time period relates to social media in this time period. I think that that's just really, really helpful, Judd. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you have any, any last thoughts or just encouragement for people walking through this season? Uh, not at eight in the morning. Uh, if, if we're, we're, we're nocturnal people at the Kirkpatrick house. So if they want to, they want to check in, you know, one or two in the morning, I'll, I'll probably have more profound things. To share. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> be careful. You've got some college students and young adults that might be like, I'm with you. You know, like, yeah. let's talk. Yeah. Oh, man. That's awesome. Um, Judd, I just have tremendous respect for you. Um, I appreciate this. And I know it's been beneficial to me. I hope for those of you guys who are watching, it's been beneficial to you guys. Um, and if you have questions, if you have comments, like share those and Judd, I'll just get Judd to respond instead of me responding. That'd be better. Um, but we can, we can work through that. But you make me better. And like I said, I just want to come back and end here. Like that question or that tension that you just um, articulated so well for the season has really helped me. And I think it's helped our team. And so, like, I know you were just talking, but the Holy Spirit's using you in more ways than you even realize. And so I really appreciate that. Um, and maybe for all of us who are – moms and dads just to remember that one of the most invisible things we do in this season is probably bedtime and um, the middle of the night being with our kids or how we discipline or how we point them to God's word but all of those things have a huge eternal impact so keeping those things at the forefront is really huge so I'll, even when they yeah. want you to go back to work like mine Yes, exactly. <laughs> Persevering through adversity. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Judd. laughs> yes. Well, hey, cheap breakfast, deep thoughts has been phenomenal. Yes, sir. Hopefully Thank we can do this again sometime, you know? You. Yes. All right. Have Thanks a good day, man. See you. All right. See you.